Aging isn't exactly what we signed up for, but what if it didn't have to be this way? What if getting old didn't mean slowing down, falling apart, or dealing with a laundry list of health issues? Well, it does not come at a surprise that science might have an answer, and it's called senolytics. Today, we're diving into this cutting edge research to find out, can we actually slow down or even reverse aging? And no, this isn't some snake oil nonsense. We're talking real clinical science here. First off, meet the villains of our story, senescent cells. These are cells that, well, refuse to die. Normally, old cells are supposed to break down and clear out, but these ones don't get the memo. Instead, they stick around like guests who refuse to leave the party. And they're not just hanging out, they're actively causing problems. These zombie cells release a toxic cocktail of chemicals that messes with nearby healthy cells. Think inflammation, think tissue damage, think while well, aging. Over time, they build up and start wreaking havoc in our bodies, contributing to everything from arthritis to heart disease to dementia. So here's where senolytics come in. Senolytics are a new class of drugs designed to hunt down and eliminate these zombie cells. Picture a specialized cleanup crew for your body, targeting only the troublemakers. These drugs literally push senescent cells into self-destruct mode, clearing them out so your tissues can function more smoothly. One senolytic combo you'll often hear about is dacetinib and quercetin. Dacetinib is a cancer drug originally developed to target specific cancer cells, while quercetin is a plant compound found in foods like apples and onions. Together, they've shown unique abilities to target and kill off senescent cells in research studies, making them a top focus in early senolytic research. The science isn't just theory either. Animal studies and yes, even some human trials are showing real promise. Mice treated with senolytics have shown fewer signs of frailty, better heart health, and even improved cognitive function. Early human trials using dacetinib and quercetin are hinting at similar benefits. We're talking about actual improvements in physical health, not just superficial fixes. Okay, but why should you care? Well, here's the thing. Senolytics aren't about living forever. They're about making the years we do have better. This isn't just lifespan we're talking about, it's health span. The goal is to stay active, independent, and frankly, still enjoying life as we get older. Imagine your 60s or 70s without arthritis, heart disease, or the fog of dementia. Imagine needing fewer meds, fewer hospital visits, fewer hours spent managing chronic issues. That's the dream here. And for a lot of us, that's enough to pay attention. And this goes beyond just personal health. We're talking about a potential shift in how we age as a society. Think about it, if people stay healthier for longer, that's less strain on healthcare, more active older adults in the workforce, and more resources freed up for things other than chronic disease management. But of course there's still a but, so let's zoom out for a second. Senolytics didn't just appear out of nowhere. The science has been building up for decades. The idea of zombie or senescent cells goes back to the 1960s when researchers first discovered that cells eventually stopped dividing, entering a sort of cellular retirement. But it wasn't until the last 20 years or so that we connected these cells to actual aging and age-related diseases. And in 2015, a breakthrough study changed everything. Scientists found that dacetinib and quercetin could actually clear out senescent cells in animals. That was the moment we started thinking, wait, could this work in humans too? Fast forward to today, and we have early clinical trials suggesting that it might. But there's still a long way to go. Experts in the field are cautiously optimistic. Dr. James Kirkland, one of the pioneers of senolytic research at the Mayo Clinic, says the data so far is promising, but there's no magic bullet. Kirkland points out that we're still figuring out exactly which cells to target and how to do it safely without hitting these cells that might actually help us like those involved in healing injuries or repairing tissue. Then you have researchers like Dr. Judith Campisi, who emphasize that while senolytics might reduce age-related damage, they're just one piece of a much bigger puzzle in fighting aging. According to her, combining senolytics with other therapies like anti-inflammatory drugs or lifestyle interventions could be where we really see a revolution in aging science. As exciting as this sounds, there are big questions around the safety and ethics of using senolytics. 
For one, we don't fully know the long-term effects. What happens if you take these drugs for years? Could they impact cells we actually need? And then there's the issue of access. Will this treatment be affordable for everyone or will it be a luxury for a select few? Ensuring that these therapies don't widen existing health disparities is a top concern for scientists and policymakers alike. If we're going to extend health span, it has to be in a way that's fair and accessible to all. Looking forward, experts are predicting that the next five to 10 years will be crucial for senolytics. Larger clinical trials are in the works and pharmaceutical companies are racing to develop new and more effective senolytic drugs. The hope is that senolytics will eventually be part of a routine treatment for age-related diseases and maybe even available as preventive medicine. But one thing's clear, it's an exciting time. Scientists and biotech companies are pouring billions into research, convinced that the future of aging will look nothing like the past. Imagine a future where we're not just living longer, but living better with less pain, fewer limitations, and more years to actually enjoy life. So where does that leave us? Senolytics are still in the early stages, but they're one of the most promising areas in anti-aging science. They might not make us immortal, but they could very well make those later years something to look forward to instead of something to dread. If you want to stay up to date with the science that's pushing these boundaries, hit subscribe. Because the future of aging might be closer than we think, and you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching, and here's to a healthier, longer future.